So explorations within GA4 are a completely new feature and this is where you can create custom visualizations of your data within GA4. So it allows you to create quick visualizations of data that you don't typically get within the reports and it can be very useful for just getting a good understanding of your data but also giving you custom insights that are just quick and easy to get access to. So within Explorations there are templates that you were given but you can also create a blank canvas from the beginning. When we click into the templates we can see all the different types that are available. So you get a free form which is just a normal table. You have funnel exploration so you can create your own custom funnel and view it as an exploration. You have path exploration so you can view uh, user paths and user journeys for your website. You have segment overlap so you can see how much overlap there are between two groups. Cohort exploration and then user lifetime as well. You also have use cases so this is where you can choose a specific use case and GA4 will build an exploration for you and industries um, which will help you uh, with the build of your exploration as well. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will build a blank canvas exploration. Cool, so we're in explorations now and you can see this is quite different to the way how the rest of GA4 works. So on the left hand side, we have the name of the exploration which is currently unnamed, the date range. We have segments that we've created, dimensions and metrics. So before we can build an exploration, we need to import the data that we want to see within our blank canvas here. So let's start off by importing some dimensions that we might be interested in. So now you can see all the different types of dimensions that are available to us. So we can see them broken down by different categories. And this will all depend on you know what it is that you like to see. By default, you're shown all dimensions that are currently tracked, but you can look at you know predefined dimensions, which are dimensions that are captured out of the box, and also custom dimensions that you and your team have implemented yourself um, in order to capture within GA4. So if we put in a few ones that might be useful, so let's pull age, gender, um, and let's pull in page so say host name page title and page path for screen class and let's put in some metrics so let's put in some session level metrics so session and let's put in users as well so put in active users let's also put in some segments so with ga4 there are three types of segments that you can make you can make a user segment, you can make a session level segment, or you can create a event segment. So this will all really depend on you know what it is that you're trying to achieve. If for example you want to look at users who recently purchased a product from you, then you'll create a, a user level segment. If you want to create a segment for all traffic that came from a specific campaign that you ran, then you use a session level segment. And if you want to look at every time that a specific page is viewed, then you want to create a event level segment. There are also suggested segments within here, which will be created for you if you click, and you have general, shopping, templates, and then predictive segments within here as well, which um, are pretty useful because it makes it easier for you to create a segment, especially if you're not very savvy at, at doing this yourself. So let's pull in non-purchases, so users who didn't make a purchase. You'll also notice as well, that when you're creating a segment, you have the option to build an audience. So audiences within GA4 are quite similar to Universal 96 in the fact that you can create a new audience which is based on a segment of your users which you can then use for marketing campaigns. So if you wanted to, for example, export an audience of users who didn't purchase but have, viewed your, have been on your website and viewed some products, then you can create an audience um, like we can right here by clicking build an audience and you can then export that audience to Google Ads and you can do remarketing to that specific audience to try and entice them to come back and, and make a purchase on your website. So it's, it's a very powerful feature of GA4. For this section, we won't go into that, but that is one way that you can build an audience within GA4. So let's click save and apply. And we now have all the information that we need. So we have our segments, dimension and metrics all already available on the left-hand side. 
So now all we have to do is bring them onto the right hand side in order for us to begin to visualize and build this canvas. So we have rows and columns on the right hand side uh, and depending on how we want to break this down we'll put it in in a way that we see fit. So let's stick with rows for now. So let's look at page path and then values is where you're dropping your metrics. So let's pull in active users by page path. So what you're, you see is that you get the total number of active users by the page path that we have within here. So there's lots fallen into not set, which could be because of the value that we've assigned. So let's try and pull in a different value instead. So if we pull in views, and let's try and replace active users with views. Great. And now we have the breakdown of views by each individual page, which is, which is essentially page views. So we have non-purchase in here, but let's say we want to compare non-purchases to purchases. So if we create another segment, select purchases, and then when it loads, let's save and apply. And we can now see that breakdown. So you can see purchases versus non-purchases and then what pages they frequently saw as a result. So you can see lots of them visiting individual item lists or individual products themselves in that case. So by default, this is looking at a free form table, but we can change it to be a different view. So if we wanted it to be a pie chart instead, we can change that visualization. And yes, yeah, so you can see the breakdown of the pages for each individual page. So other is all the pages that um, aren't, aren't counted because we're looking at 10 slices. But if we increase that, that view will change as a result because more pages are now included. And um, you can change it to be a line chart. So you can look at a trended view of that over time. And you can see there's one day where an individual page got a lot of views, more than usual. And you can also change this to be different views as well. So uh, we're looking at a funnel, but you can check uh, free from exploration. But again, you can look at cohorts, custom funnels, segment overlap, path exploration, and user lifetimes as well. So there are lots of different ways that you can change and manipulate this visualization within explorations. You can also have more than one visualization per exploration. So let's say, for example, we wanted this to be just non-purchases and let's remove purchases. We can create a new tab and you can, again, change it to be whichever one you wanted it to be. We'll stick with free form and then you can pull in purchases and then let's pull in page path and views and then we'll have we'll now have that value so it's purchases and this now gives us that view so you now have a breakdown of non-purchases and how they performed and we can change that to be you know, 10 bar charts instead and then we can have a breakdown of just purchases as well so you you have the ability to add in multiple sheets within one exploration which can you know help you to break it down a bit easier and just give you lots more information as a result by default explorations will only be saved for yourself individually however if you'd like to save them with members of your team if you click this plus icon here it'll allow you to save share it and that will allow you to share it with everyone in your team so not just you will see it anyone who logs into ga4 and goes to explorations they will also be able to see this exploration as well and the last thing you'd want to do is to give it a name. So we could call it test expiration, but in your case, you could call it whatever you see fit. And then there it is, saved.